Um, I'm just on the side that you don't take this bill to the floor. This is a personal and unique testimony. Five months ago, I was talking to a friend, and the conversation turned to abortion. His wife asked to have the phone, and she proceeded to request uh, that I consider the woman's side, her perspective, her mental health, um, her financial suffering, maybe she's low income, uh, and the suffering that she'd have to endure if the child was put up for foster care. And what about the child growing up without loving parents? What about the lack of quality that the child would have to endure? I said, I have a lot of compassion for those women, and they deserve to be loved and cared for. However, I also said by her logic, I should have been aborted. My mother had suffered a great deal already in her life. She lived through the Vietnam War, was in, abused in the Reformation camp, struggled to provide for my older sister, and was in a not so great marriage. By birthing me, my mother would be committing to carrying, carrying me to term, which involves risk, facing emo emotional distress, enduring financial cost, angering her abusive husband, and endure the pain of handing me over to a caseworker. I too suffered. I was abused as a child. I went to bed hungry. I was 86 pounds as a ninth grader. I went through 11 foster care placements in 13 years. Some of these placements uh, were boys' homes where boys would uh, write things with their feces on the bathroom walls. They were fighting. The, uh, some of these uh, children were just released out of juvenile detention. Uh, they were gang members. They'd rip out their hair. All sorts of different things are, are the people I had to live with. Uh, even though I suffered greatly, I'm so happy that I'm alive. I'm in a beautiful marriage, and I have two beautiful children. Uh, my, my mother also said that um, if she had to do it all again, despite her tremendous suffering, she would have me. And without um, me being alive, our, my children wouldn't be alive, and then my, ch uh, my grandchildren wouldn't be alive. So I want you to consider that. So life is going to have its ups and downs. We will all struggle. But give people like me a chance to live. Don't kill us. Let us use our time, talents, and resources to help women out of abusive relationships, navigate the financial difficulties, and assist them in acclimating to new countries. Let's not encourage women to see children as the enemy, but do everything we can to make the choice of loving their unborn child accessible and easy. So I just want to be the voice for the other patient, for the child um, in the womb. Um, as I was sitting here, I did have a few questions um, for the opposing side, specifically for the religious ones, because I have a religious interest. When the rabbi says that um, there's a gradation of personhood, I think that what she means is that once the, per, uh, the baby is born, then they get the, the right as a person. But consider this fact. What if a woman was pregnant and the baby was taken out of the womb, they got a, uh, some surgery or some medical care, and they were placed back in the womb. So that person received their personhood, and they were placed back in the womb. Is that personhood ripped from them? Do they, in the gradation, do they slide back into someone without rights? So that'd be my question for her. And then for uh, the pastor, I think he misused the term free will. He was conflating free will and choice and conscience with morality. Just because you can use your conscience, just because you have free will, doesn't mean that it's moral. Just because you will something doesn't mean that it's right. It could also be wrong. So you do have the responsibility um, as lawmakers to enforce that people do the right thing, like not kill, not terminate, whatever euphemisms they want to use. Uh, Furthermore, for the religious people out there, there's more text within scripture that would uh, safeguard or recognize a baby. Mainly, it'd be Jesus. Jesus was recognized in the womb by John the Baptist and his mother Elizabeth. That baby leapt in the womb and recognized Jesus as the Messiah while Jesus was in the womb of Mary. Um, and then to the woman that was sitting here that also endured great suffering as a child, she said that she wished that uh, she would have been brought into the world when her parents were more stable, 
when they could provide better for her. But the biology behind it is if they became pregnant at a later time, that would, she would not exist. A different person would exist, but she would not exist. So just because they waited, she, she was essentially saying that she wished that she wasn't alive, which was perplexing to me. And then how about um, Can I people I just who, ask you to move along where you're at about five minutes now and we still have several people to go? Sure. I'll, I'll just uh, end with um, this last uh, point. If we are saying that someone's life it doesn't have worth because they might be sick or they might have some medical condition, to me that sounds like eugenics. So you're saying that because you're going to be suffering medically um, that you should not be birthed. And that, um, for me, is, is uh, very problematic. Thank you. Thank you.